actually it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. We ask our Y end or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker. We tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him, if he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. Find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. Email us, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Text us, 865-658-5824. Join alongside Tim live in Green Bay. We've got Jacob on the border of Wisconsin and Minnesota. And we got a special special guest, Carly Ray, in the house tonight. How's everybody doing today? Tim, All right. Is that a new, new tracksuit? I see. Hey, Tim, get out there. Springtime, man. Got to get the got to get the tracksuits out, man. <laughs> I could never pull a tracksuit off. <laughs> I look like a hot air balloon. Got Coach <laughs> in the house. Good to see you, Coach. <laughs> let's do this. Let's uh, let's take care of some housekeeping real quick. Give a real quick shout out to the sponsor of tonight's show. Ticket King, the official ticket provider of Packer Fan Total Access, Wisconsin based since 1992, specializing in Packers tickets. They are Wisconsin's largest ticket source. They've got offices next to Lambeau Field as well as in Milwaukee. You can click on the link in the video description that'll send you to theticketking.com where you can register for free as a customer and get yourself set up for that May schedule release and put yourself in position to get uh, save some money on some Packers tickets here. Obviously going to be able to uh, – to save money with them over some of the bigger name companies. And again, we appreciate uh, Ticket King, the official ticket provider of Packer Fan Total Access, sponsoring the show. So, all right. Uh, yeah, Boz in here says, Tim, part of the Green Bay Mafia right there. You love hey, forget it. Forget about it. Forget about it. I love that that was over the Ticket King ad, too. You got to love that, right? That's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's You get that with no other show. <laughs> A little extra spice to your advertisement there, Ticket King. That one's on the house. How about that? Um, but anyway, we had some news break today. I, I don't think it was news to us. I know we talked about it last night. And um, to me, the hints were all there. You know, Wildy was talking about the hints being there. Rob Domofsky was talking about it. it Sound like, all right, the Packers are going to Brazil. I didn't dream that, right, Tim? Didn't we kind of yesterday on the show, weren't we sitting there like, yeah, we're going to Brazil, right? Yeah, we kind of mentioned that it sounds like. Mark Murphy knew something that none of us out none none of us other uh, people out there really knew yet, and then lo and behold, we wake up to the news today, right? Absolutely. So NFL's Twitter account tweeted this out: said the first ever regular season game in Brazil is set, and they tagged, of course, at NFL Brazil says, and for the first time in more than fifty years, an NFL game will be played on Friday night of opening weekend. That's really exciting to me. Um, and, and I know some people don't like the idea of, of the Packers having to travel to Brazil. I always try to find the positive, you know. I'm always trying to look at the positive and everything. And to me, essentially what you've got is you've got, um, you know, you're taking a home game away from Philadelphia, right? Otherwise, you would be playing at Lincoln Financial Field in that hostile environment on the road. Instead, you're at a neutral site. So that gets me kind of excited. And, and looking at the stadium, too, it's kind of a grainy image, but this is kind of a cool setup here. I think it only holds right at 50,000 people, if I understood correctly. And they may spice it up a bit to, to get as many people in there as possible. But I love how it's kind of open air, but the, the stands are covered, too. So you're going to get plenty of plenty of airflow through there, obviously, down there in Brazil. But I think that's a cool set. I don't know about you guys, but I like unique stadiums. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It looks kind of intimate too, you know. Um, right. Not not quite like uh, when we were in uh, we were in London. That was a gigantic stadium. This looks a little more intimate. Looks like they might be able to add a another tier of of seating maybe there in the end zones. 
that's the first thing I thought of, Tim. Um, it kind of kind of looked like you could beef that up a touch, right? And and yeah. maybe maybe even outside the stadium there, do something unique, put up maybe a, a an extra tier on that little pavilion there. But I think it's going to be cool, man. I'm excited to. And here's the thing, too: people are like, well, they have to travel; they're going to be at a disadvantage. Both teams have to travel, yeah. but at the same time, too. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the first week of the season, so there's going to be plenty of rest leading up to it, and I'm pretty sure there's some extra time until week two as well, the way they've tried to set it up. So um, what do you think about it, Jacob? How do you feel about the Packers going down to Brazil, man? Uh, man, to be honest, I'm a little bit on the fence about it um, for a, a, a few different reasons I won't get into right now, but a lot of them is just kind of the safety, I guess, and like the – I don't know. It just It just seems like an odd – it's a long distance. Um, the Packers haven't had a home opener until Tim. Am I correct? It's 2017. Yeah, I believe it's 2017. Was like that the last. to me is that to me is criminal. I don't understand. Um, I understand being excited for this, but like seven, eight years without having a home game. I mean, what are we doing? Um, so yeah. in a way, I'm happy. I'd like to see us reach out, you know, and expand the NFL fan base. But <clears throat> at the same time, it's like, oh, oh man, it just seems a little bit. I don't. know. I, I'm I'm not I'm fifty fifty on it. I really don't honestly have an opinion. I will say one thing. O- Omer mentioned it on on Twitter on my post that hey, at least it's week one. You know, we can mm-hmm. we can do this. Start the season. You know, finish preseason. Get yourself ready. You know, it's going to be a bit of a red eye flight there, and a little bit of jet lag, and you know, a, a crazy international game to start the season. But then it's like you know, you get back and you get back to your routine and you go forward. It would be a heck of a lot different, man, if, you know, we're five, six games into the, the season coming off a bye or something and That's a good point. doing this. So, and, and don't get me wrong. I love Brazil. And I know that they're a massive fan base of the Green Bay Packers. I love Brazil. Um, Bolsonaro. Right. It has nothing to do with the fans. Right. I right. Just, I, oh, absolutely not. I absolutely love Brazil. I think it'd be great. Um, I think it'd be, I'm just, I'm just on the fence, man. I don't know. It just seems kind of awkward and weird. Yeah, I thought this was interesting, too, as Brock says here in the chat, because I've seen something come across uh, Twitter about this earlier today. It says, I saw something that there is an informal ban on wearing green in that stadium that's after true. Arch Rival is a green team. Did you, <laughs> did you hear about that, or is that a spoof or what? No, that's – I uh, Dara Callagher actually tweeted that out, and I looked it up. It does seem like it's true. <laughs> and he, Dara actually put out a post, too, and it said, uh, Eagles versus Packers, good luck with that. Like, <laughs> so, so we'll yeah. be in the all white color rush then. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. Get it done. What do you think about it, Carly? How you feel about the, the Packers traveling down there to Brazil? It's kind of like one of those things. There's not a whole lot of reason to get upset about it. I'm glad it's not in a crazy other time zone. I'm wondering what they're going to do about the flight. Like if they have to have a connection, but I mean, they're big boys. They'll, they'll make it work. And I'm, um, I'm also glad to have it more of on a, like a neutral, a neutral setting. Um, and I do believe that the Packers will be the best represented team there. I believe we're going to just smoke them as far as fan representation, which is really cool. So I think I think it'll be really exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool that they're sending America's real team uh, for the international game this year. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I, I tell you, man, the chat's already off the rails in here, though. Um, Jake Shavink trying to bring it back full circle says Eagles have an all black uni. The Packers could go all white like the color rushes. That makes the most sense, right? Um, this one cracked me up though. Jim in the chat said this game is exclusively on Peacock. The NFL can go to hell with that. <laughs> so, there are a lot of people that are upset with the Peacock thing. Um, for me personally, you know, I, I'm I'm already subscribed to Peacock. I'm a big office person, as you guys may or may not have noticed. Um yep. The super fan episodes for the office is just unbelievable, man. Um, so, you know, and again, I'm that person that I'll I'll pay a month of something just to be able to watch a, a sporting event. I'm the I'm the knucklehead that drops a decent chunk of change on these pay per views for UFC and stuff like that. So, I'm not the person to to vent to with that, or at least I just need to keep my mouth shut. I should say so. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be interesting though to see how the Packers. Kind of, kind of play down there, and, and to see the the fan turning. You know, the fans are just going to be absolutely wild. It's going to be an awesome atmosphere. I'm with you, Carly. I think the Packers fans will show up. I wouldn't be surprised if it's it's 75 percent Packer fans because there's a huge mm-hmm. following in Brazil. Um, the so. Wisconsin fans also, I believe, if you're in the markets, it'll be on the NBC affiliate. So Milwaukee and Green Bay markets will have that 
on the local stations it's to the best of me. It's my understanding. So, <laughs> Jacob, you're welcome to uh, make the trek over, you know, Carly, whatever. We'll, so, we'll get so together and thing. have a watch party or something. That'd be I awesome. mean, here's, here's what makes me ups, absolutely upset. I've said this multiple times on this podcast. Carly can attest. I'm sure Tim can attest. Carly can get it more than I, than, than you could, Tim, because me and Carly live in Wisconsin. We play Wisconsin taxes. Everything that we do gets into that zone, right? But for whatever reason, we don't get to watch our team. We don't get to pick whether or not we can see our team. And it drives me up the freaking wall <laughs> that on any given day that I have to decide whether or not, like, who's in the market. No, I don't understand that. And anyways, um, do you guys remember when they talked about how we're going to cut the cord and it's going to be so much easier because there's no not going to be any more cable? Yo, I have 17 subscriptions to everything. <laughs> they said it's going to be cool. And it's still blacked yeah. out. <laughs> it's still blacked out. I like what Ron Sample says what? here. They'll start saving now, everyone. Scrape together the $5. For people. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, man. But I, I get you, Jacob. Man, you can get lost in those subscriptions, bro. Like you, you and, look, and, uh, and if you get at a, so I bought NFL Plus Premium or whatever this season, and it's still, it still is limited by my network like location and so i still could not get the games that were like that the vikings had you know taken over whatever even though i spent some extra money so it is yeah it is a serious problem it sounds like it yeah so uh yeah i mean i don't know I, again i'm fired up for it i think it's going to be awesome for the brazil fans it's funny k adams had a an interesting conversation earlier with someone on up and uh up and adams with k and uh, listen to her respond to this guy who says there's nothing to do in Green Bay, man. Kay Adams, I think there is – I could be misunderstanding, but I believe there is a a man in Kay's life. I don't know if it's a fiancé, boyfriend, or what, that is a Packer fan, right? Yeah. And she's and she, a Bears fan. Right, yeah, and she's starting to kind of – she said, you know, I heard her talk about this before. She's learning more and more about Green Bay because of, you know, who she was seeing. And it kind of feels like you guys remember the Xavier McKinney interview, right? Like she kind of pulled that information and she's going, Hey, you know, your old, your old recruiter down there from Alabama is actually their defensive backs coach. Now, like she kind of bridged the gap there for us, but check it out here, man. She, I think she's becoming a Packer fan guys. Listen to what she had to say. This cracked me up. I didn't like them. They're like, don't take a home game away from us kind of thing. No. There's nothing to do in green Bay. Brazil is, is the best. Do they have a Piggly Wiggly in Brazil? Do not. Okay. Got roasted pig. They have a strip club called the Oval Office in Brazil because they have one in Green Bay. Um, oh, wow. The Packers. <laughs> Bro, the Piggly Wiggly comment got me. Now. I remember there being a Piggly Wiggly in my hometown when I was like nine, ten years old, right? And it, and it got shut down for reasons we probably shouldn't even mention on here. But anyway. <laughs> I can't Small believe K just plugged the Oval Office on there. Bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> and, then, and then you see her reaction. Oh, wow. Like, she, yeah. I can't believe I just said that. So huh. I was cracking up at everyone who was responding on Twitter to that, going, Yep, been to the Oval Office. Oh, and God. you would be surprised how many were female. I'll just leave it at that. All right. But what'd you yeah. say, Jake? No, I actually, um, <clears throat> I moved to Nashville in 2014 for five years, and I was beyond surprised to find that they had. A Piggly Wiggly on, uh, I think it was Division Street, if I'm not mistaken. And I went in there, I was like, oh my gosh. And it was right next, because like Nashville is kind of, you know, up and coming hipsterish. And it was right next to like a very bougie, like high end clothing store. <laughs> and the next door was Piggly Wiggly. And I just went, mm, I know where I'm getting my groceries. Look at Doug Pointer, just in case Kay's watching. He said, date my son. There you go. <laughs> so my man in here doing oh. some advertising for his boy. I like it. Speaking of date, my son, look at this. Look at this guy right here. What are we? Unbelievable. <laughs> what a segue. That's what I get brought in on. That's... Hey, that's that's what happens when you're late, Emilio. You know, yeah, that's I know. the way it is, dude. So I don't make the rules. All right. So you didn't change Emilio, the oil on the, the car bed? <laughs> dude, I'm that thing is still on the, you know, when you get into a car problem and you start tearing that thing apart and there's eight other problems. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. That that room is under construction. <laughs> I love it. Good what thing you I got about? all the tools though from Milwaukee Tool, right? <laughs> Fuel line M18 M12. Hit us up, Milwaukee. Stop I'm it. gonna get Justin 
who does the graphics for Packernet Podcast. I'm going to get him to create us one with the PTA logo and the Milwaukee sign in the back. You know Thank I mean? you. Like the whole, the we'll whole get that car badged up like a NASCAR, man. Yeah. Get it all set. <laughs> I'm for it. Emilio, what do you think about Brazil, man? You excited about the Packers going to Brazil? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's an – obviously, think about it. We got, what, nine home games, seven away, one neutral, and it's an NFC opponent. I'm for it. The Eagles, they, they've been tough. We, we've, you know, um, they've been a problem before. They're not a, you know, they're not a bad team. Not I'm bad. not, I'm not really opposed to them going down there, right? It's the first game of the season, get some rest. Matt needs to, you know, grab it by the reins. I think this can't, this time when he goes, when he goes down there and say, this is, this is what we're doing. This is how it's going to go. But I think it'll be a really good learning experience for the young team. Jordan Love can step up, be a leader, you know, um, lead by example, not by, you know, doing and get through that. I think it'll be, I think it'll be kind of like, you know, sending them off to school and they come back and they're, they're ready to roll when they get home. I yeah. not, not mad about it, man. Can, can I just say, I just realized next year we're going to have the NFL draft in green Bay. And then we're going to freaking Brazil for week one. Like yeah. the Packers are going international, bro. They are dude. Big time, man. I'm telling you they're, it's just so cool, man. To think back, we've hit on a lot of the history segments here this offseason. How many times that team almost went belly up, you know what I mean, and had to rely on the local business owners to, to rally people together and do stock drives and everything. It's just – and now here they are going, you know, they're the league's top choice to go to Brazil, right? That's, that's this year, guys. Yeah. yeah, that's this year, isn't it? So it's yeah. – yeah. Yeah. yeah, this September, week one. Yeah, and then yeah, hopefully we get the draft in Green Bay, and then we get a home opener in Green Bay. Yeah, that that has to happen. Jacob said how long it had been. That absolutely has to happen. Yeah. And I think that's maybe why they were willing to do the Brazil thing this year because I do believe that we will get the home opener next year. I mean, it's criminal. Matt Lafleur's never coached a, a home opener. <laughs> right. I feel like he deserves it at some point. I mean, yeah. how many how many double digit win seasons do you need? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. It's just it, – when it comes to the home opener, what I would like to see in a perfect world, week one, Lambeau Field, right, moving forward. But every other home game, I want it in the coldest weather, dude. Yeah. I just love Lambeau in the winter, man. That Nothing ticks me off more than the last three or four weeks of the season. We got like – you know, right. the last four weeks, we got three dome games. I'm just going, come on, man. Like, Wait, that is the flip side, Clayton. You're right because, like, the last few seasons, man, we've had crucial games at home. And we've been able to play them, you know, at Lambeau towards the end of the year in the cold. So I mean, there's nothing better though when a game in September, man, fall starting to set in in Green Bay. You're sitting at Lambeau Field with a daddy soda and a brat, man. It don't get any better than that, though. It don't. So and, and you, you could be, you know, you could be up there in the booth with me and uh up there in the uh the box with me and Jacob last year too, or the year before last. Jacob, that was a heck of an experience, wasn't it? Man? Remember, remember what you told me too is like when we first walked up. Clayton was like, "Hey, man, you know, maybe try to keep it a little cool. Don't get right. too rowdy." And then before you knew it, like <laughs> by the second quarter, we had guys behind us that were like, "They're gonna get kicked out like, oh, in yeah. the box suites." In the we box, were the civil ones, yeah, yeah. We were the civil ones. My favorite moment. I've told this before. I'm gonna tell it a thousand times too. Was the guy? A guy came back down to his seat and said, "They cut me off." And Jacob, <laughs> Jacob like literally heard it and went. And he jumped up to go get him a couple of beer. He was afraid they were serving. <laughs> so he goes, and as he go, he said, I'm gonna go grab something you want. And I'm like, no. Nah. And that guy went, they ain't gonna sell it to you. Jacob comes back with two tall boys. Two <laughs> that guy was so mad, bro. He was so mad. But we had a we had a good time. And we found out later that that Christian Watson's uh mom and his sister were actually just they were in the same section as us, just several seats back. Wish I'd known that we would have went up and introduced herself because obviously she's been on the show and, and she had mentioned, hey, if you're if you're ever at Lambeau, uh, hit us up. You know, we'd like to meet. So um, just awesome people. But it was cool, man. I, I'm big on the box seats. Man. I just love being able to see the whole freaking field. Um, and uh, I don't know. It was just awesome. Snow flying, had a little bit of snow flying. We had access to the roof, didn't we, Jacob? It was awesome, man. Oh, dude, that was that was maybe the best part of the whole night is to go up on the very top. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Anybody in the chat or anything, if you go up to the new renovated, like top of the top, it's just, I mean, it's just, you feel like you're on, you're in heaven. I mean, you really do. You look down and you're just, you have your beer behind it. You got everything you ever need. And just everybody's in such a good mood. It was just like, 
is awesome. And down and the snow. Remember, the snow was starting to kind of fall a little bit. You could see the mist. It was just like, yeah, yeah this is this is literally what Lamo. This is what I feel like. <laughs> if I ever meet the pearly gates, this is like what it'll <laughs> kill you. Are. It it literally made the trip for me seeing Jacob's reaction when we walked out onto that deck. Wow, and awesome. we were like, he was, it was like a kid, dude. It, it was awesome. He's like, I'm gonna start crying. Like, it, it was <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we had Seth Ruder with us too, who won the giveaway. Good times. That's man. right. Good yeah. Time, so. Yeah. Crazy. It went quick too, man. Of course, uh, Justin and Nicole um, down there <laughs> freezing their keisters off. We were up there with our sweatshirts off in the in the box. You know, about sixty seven degrees. So, yeah. but we'll be called fake uh, fake fans for that for sure. <laughs> Let's get this off here. The disrespect for Emilio. I'm not standing for it. Yeah, Too really this says Emilio has bedhead from the race car bed nap there. So. <laughs> There you go. I wish. <laughs> yeah, but I, I wish I had time to nap. I could use a nap right now too. So we made a signing today, guys. And oh boy. yeah, and I did a little research. All right, I'm tired of people making fun of me for not being able to pronounce names. And it sounded like this guy had class with a young lady, and she said he always referred to himself as Jamon Green. Is how his who? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, we uh. This is a uh, a cornerback that was signed today by the Packers. Rob Domofsky said Packers signed a corner who had a short stint on the Giants practice squad last season. You immediately connect the dots with Xavier McKinney. You know how my mind fires, too. I'm sitting here going, all right, we went out and got Xavier McKinney. Now we signed you know, a cornerback from the same defense. Is Halfley's defense going to look a little bit like the Giants last year? Like That's how my mind starts kicking. Probably not true. But uh, do you guys have anything on him? I'm imagining the answer is no. <laughs> um, what yeah. I can basically tell you is that I'm pretty sure the guy has not played a snap. Um, <laughs> Jake Shavink. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Room yeah. Corner room is set. <laughs> no Jake need. Seth. Guess we're not drafting uh, Cooper DeGene, huh? Yeah, we don't, need, we don't need Cooper. We don't need any of these guys. Come on. <laughs> we got Germ Germ German or German. German. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, Dan. I, I from what I saw, is he's a very raw talent. I think he's a UDFA. Um, doesn't have a single snap. I don't think uh, that PFF can grade. So mm -hmm. he's pretty good. And he's gonna be awesome. He, he's not bad, right? He's right not bad. bad. He can block. He. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> we don't know that. He can get block. <laughs> block. <laughs> Here's the other thing too: is Jay Cole saying he may be a special teamer? Apparently, he's not. <laughs> like. He didn't play it in college, is from what I um, read. So, so it's he's here to just compete then, try, he's, try and win a, win a spot. Probably going to be a practice squad guy, you yeah. know, to be honest with you. Now, we'll see what happens. But, again, man, it, it's uh, – it, one of the things I wanted to ask everybody on Twitter and specifically everyone in the Patreon group that we got was like, hey, how do you feel about position of need, like – if you could choose, all right, here's the best player available at whatever position you want is how I probably should have worded the question. What position do you want the Packers to take with the number 25th pick? All right, that was the question I asked. Here's the Twitter poll. So I said, uh, Packer fans, if you had to choose one position, which would you prefer Green Bay draft with the 25th pick in this year's draft? And surprisingly, offensive line came in at the top at 39%. Now, keep in mind, there's 535 votes, so it's pretty – Pretty healthy size of votes here, right? 39% offensive line, 33% cornerback, 15% safety, 14% linebacker. So there's many people that they're not as concerned about the linebacker room. Uh, I probably shouldn't say that. Maybe they're looking at it like the depth of this draft and the fact that there's no, you know, slam dunk, surefire first round linebackers. Maybe that kind of steered it in this direction. They're looking at, all right, where is the talent at in the first round? But offensive line kind of ran away with it, that in cornerback. What do you guys think about this poll? Do you do you agree with it? I mean, if it's um, – personally, I think cornerback is my biggest need um, just because mm -hmm. me and – I think Tim and I have talked about this multiple times. That if you don't get a cornerback, one of the good ones in the first two rounds, it just kind of – you kind of have that steep drop off there. Um, and there are some probably some gems that you can find later in the in the draft, but – <clears throat> for my two cents at 25 or if we're trading back, I hope we trade back for like, you know, now I'm thinking like 32, 33, something like that. Still get one of the top, maybe four or five corners. If we could, um, mm -hmm. I, I think cornerback is definitely our biggest one. Yeah. 
And since you brought that up, and we'll go around the horn and ask everyone else too, here is the trade chart, all right? Um, if you were to trade back, like you said, Jacob, the 25th pick is worth 230 points. Let's say you trade back to 30th, right? It's worth 196 points, okay? So essentially you're picking up, what, 34 points there? So they have to make up the 34 points. That would be good for, you know, say, uh, let's see, let's say you trade it back to 30, right, and it's Baltimore. So if you go to Baltimore and you find their next pick where it's somewhere around 30 points, you'd be looking at 93-ish, um, 113, somewhere around there. So you're still flirting with picking up another top 100 pick, and you're only moving back five spots, right? So I, it's just – it's wild the how the value changes when you get out of the first round, right? So – I'm I'm definitely team trade back for sure. But what do you think, Tim? What would be your position that you would say if and and really, like I said, the better way to ask the question probably is let's say the talent in the current you know tier, it's all the same. Everybody's graded out the same. What would you rather draft? What position with the twenty five? I'm with Jacob. If we're gonna if we're not trading back and we're staying at twenty five, I I'd like to go corner, um, and then offensive line. Those would be my first two choices i'd be happy either way which tells me we'll probably take a d lineman or a <laughs> linebacker or you know, you know like mike hebring said a, wi a wide receiver who knows right, so, right. um but yeah no i'd like to see him go corner at 25 and uh get one of these uh you know one of these names that we've you know been talking about at nauseum for the last two and a half months but uh you know if, if jacob's right man i mean if i i feel like we can still get value later on in the draft at corner, it's just not going to be, you know, a guy who's going to walk in and start for you type yeah. of player. So, um, you know, I'd like to see corner first, but we'll see. Hey, that's yeah. a good question by Jake here. What do you guys think? Yeah, let me uh, hold on just one second. Elder Graham had something here. He said, uh, I'm I'm team trade back unless someone like Fontana or DeGene drops to us. That's I think that true. makes a lot of sense there. Yeah. You know, there's, a, there's a handful of players that if they fall in our lap, yeah, you no brainer. You got to take them, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, uh, Jacob, Jake Shavink in the chat said the real question: Newton, Barton, or McKinstry? I was kind of taken back by what Mike Wall said about Graham Barton. Uh, Graham Barton was like, I don't, or I'm sorry, uh, Mike Wall was like, I don't think Graham Barton is a guard. He said, I think he's a center. And he started list talking about what he didn't like about him playing guard. And uh, I think his hands were one thing. <laughs> It kind of put me put me off guard a little bit, um, but I'm still high on Barton. It's not going to change my opinion on it. I just when people like that, people like Mike say things like that, it makes you want to go back and watch the tape again. Like, okay, what what is he seeing here? If he's looking at it from a technical standpoint, that's what Mike does for a living with process to perform. Like he's working with old linemen to teach technique and everything. So, um, Emilio, what do you think? What would your position be, Bub? I mean, I I feel like they're just going to kind of. Um, get a cornerback room together. I think we're, they could probably find some dogs later on. So I, I would, I'm all aboard uh, protect Jordan Love. Uh, I honestly liked Mike Wall's take on bringing in Zach Zinter. You know, the the, the center that can wrestle. Uh, that's great balance. You know, great feet. You have to be oh, Zach, Zach Frazier, right? Zach, or Zach Frazier. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, um, flexible, all that, and that that would be ideal if if we're worried about Josh Myers. Besides that. Um, I, I honestly would rather protect love. And if we could have one of the, you know, one of the big names drop even better, if not, I wouldn't be opposed to, you know, sliding back a little bit and just running day two and three. Definitely. What about you, Carly? Do you got a preference? Is there a position that you think, okay, if, if the talent was even across the board, it would make the most sense for the Packers to take it 25. Well, that's the problem is I liked the question a lot better before you asked the whole if the talent was even across the board, right, right. because I feel like I want whatever the scouts like I want a ball or I don't really even care what the position is. If there is somebody that is there, like we know that just being drafted in the first round is absolutely no guarantee of success at the NFL level. And so with that, like I want somebody that that they know or at least have a pretty high regard for regardless of what position. So um I like, I would really like to have a really great center, even though that's not technically somebody you'd want to draft in the first round. I, I want to do have the best at what we need if all, if everything else is the same. So I would say, yeah, O-line. Um, but if we're going to be playing more man, then maybe, a, you know, a kick-ass corner who's got great speed and can just, you know, can take away those, those, um, 
those passing routes is, is what we need. I, I'd be happy, honestly, with any of them if they're going to be a great ball player. Did yeah. Carly just curse? Ooh. No. Oh. oh, maybe I did. <laughs> You're in good company here. You're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's 2024. There are some words that are allowed now, right? And uh, I know some people are upset right now, but listen, put your stones back in your robes. It's the most PG-13 of all curse words. I was was giving her her (laughs) (laughs) shenanigans. Jake Shavink said, it seems like NFL teams are on the same page with Wall on that, talking about him not being a guard, being more than a center. So um, that's going to be something to just kind of put in the notes, right? Make a little uh, little note off to the side and and see – um, where he ends up, and that's how you learn from year to year when it comes to the draft, right? Picking up on these little things. So, if, um, if I'm not mistaken, that- oh, go ahead, Jacob. Sorry, wasn't uh, Graham Barton scaled down to be like the 10 out of 10 at the center position? It was like right. it was a nine six seven or whatever at uh, left tackle, and like a nine eight at guard, and then a perfect 10 at center. Same same type of thing with Zach Tom, right, Tim? Like we talked about it last year. It's you know yep. everyone who talks about Zach Tom, really good right tackle. Um, Pro Bowl caliber guard, all pro center, right? So <laughs> go ahead, I, just, uh, feel, say. I feel like it would be cool if we had, um, you know, I've mentioned this before. If we're talking center, I'd rather go later and get Cedric Bonpran. I, I think we could get him in that, you know, 126. What are we, 126, then one, 168 or something? Somewhere in that range if he's still on the board, maybe even at 91. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. 127, 127, 168. Yeah. I feel like he's that he could possibly be around in the third or fourth round um, yeah. in the draft. You know, if you, if you take a stud early, then obviously we're not going to go that route, but right. you know, we'll see. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. There was something else here in the chat I wanted to hit on real quick. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, Zach Frazier, that's the one that, that Mike Wall was just over the moon about, like Emilio mentioned. That's a name to keep an eye on. Um, You know, I'm not saying he'll leapfrog Jackson Powers Johnson. There's no reason to think that. But look up, you know, about week eight, week nine next year, right, Emilio, and see Mm -hmm. if he's just dominating at the center position. (laughs) Don't be surprised because there's something that Mike's seen there for sure. Uh, This is interesting here from Coach Lynn. He says, uh, what if Latu or Verse fall? I I think there's a significant chance that Latu falls because of the injury, right, the medicals. Uh, Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah were talking about it again today. And I think they actually compared Latu and Verse in that specific podcast. You may have heard it, Coach. That might be why it's on the forefront of your mind. The way I understood them explaining Latu and Verse, Latu, better pass rusher, Verse, better better at setting the edge. Both great prospects. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just kind of shows you all right, what, what's more important to you. Do you. Would you rather have someone who sets the edge really well or would you rather have the best pass rusher? Right? And- and listening to that one, Clayton, I'm pretty sure I was listening to the same pod. The, they were going into the fact of, all right, if we're a if we're a dome team, do we want do we want an elite skilled pass rusher with hands, you know, knows all the tricks, can bend, can do all that, or are we in the cold? Uh, we're gonna, you know, we need a thump, or we need somebody that's not afraid to, you know, stick their nose in 100 percent effort all the time and and show up and get, you know, have to get dirty if you need to. And I think that's where they were kind of landing on verse. And Latu would kind of maybe be that the um, dome elite rusher sort of thing. Definitely. And you can see here, as far as the top edge rushers, according to the 33rd team, they have Dallas Turner ranked 10th with a 68. Uh, Latu ranked 11th with a 68. Chop Robinson ranked 16th with a 67. And then Jared Verse with a 67 as well there in the 20 spot. So um, I think it's realistic that Verse could fall. And, again, it just depends on, you know, what teams are looking for? Are they looking for a, a pass rush specialist? Are they looking for someone who can play down in a down out there uh, at the edge position in a 34 front? That, that's all going to come into play for sure. Um, but, yeah, yeah. If one of those two guys fall, I would be okay with it. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Goody pulled the trigger on like a lot to if he thinks the medicals check out right. Go ahead, Jake. Uh, no, I was just going to ask if um, <clears throat> possibly Jake in the chat or if anybody else knows anything about Austin Booker. Apparently he had a visit today. Um, and he's clearly What's here with one, two, three, four, five, six, fifth or sixth uh, edge rusher here. So, oh. yeah, I was just uh, Austin Booker. I haven't heard a lot about him. I haven't looked into him very much. Uh, six five two forty. I mean, the guy seems like he's kind of a a 
a beast and he had some good pff grades if i'm not mistaken i don't know if you can pull that up uh emilio or um <clears throat> but he uh yeah another one of our guys that was the top 30 uh visit i believe so that's awesome so he's 6'5 240 pounds little light there um for a defensive end although you could put a little weight on him greenwood indiana's his hometown overall 50th according to the 33rd team six at the position with a 65 grade um see the the little short snippet of the scouting report says booker is a young and talented edge who is still developing his body and skill set but has the athleticism and length to be disruptive force uh rushing the passer now his strengths are length uh pass rush upside motor and range i love that anytime you see motor man i get fired up like hey, i think clay matthews right off the bat right um, weaknesses is play strength at the point of attack um, hand usage and pad level, all those things you notice that's lack of experience. Those are things that can be fixed, right? So Absolutely. definitely got the body for sure. Um, a little bit light, like we said. Uh, hand size, a little small. Arm length's good, though, 33 and 7 eighths, pretty decent there. Broad jump, got some explosion there with a 10-foot broad jump as well. So. so looks like PFF has him at uh, 77th. His grades in 2022, he played 23 snaps with 74.5. And then 2023, played 482 snaps at an 82.2, was the 62nd out of 836 edge. Got it. Right. Okay. Good stuff. Not bad. But not just, bad you know, n- not a lot of not a lot of playing time. So three-year sophomore, dude's, dude's young, right? Right. Yeah. And uh, Brock here in the chat says uh, injury concerns, but Latu out of UCLA could fall. Some teams could be concerned about him. Sack artist. Um, yeah, again, I think it was Daniel Jeremiah that said he heard rumors that it was going to be 18 to 20 teams taking him off their first round board. So uh, we'll see if that holds up for sure. Jake Shavink in the chat says, at Coach Lynn, now we're talking versus ceiling might be too much to pass on. And it's one of those tier one positions of importance, man, right? It's absolutely huge. It's it's just you can never have too many of those guys. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about that. So uh, <laughs> I love it. Mike Berry in the chat. Carly Ray, are you trying to uh, fly uh, fish and fly? <laughs> are you tying a, a fishing fly is what he says, Carly. Is that what you're doing over there? Guilty as charged. <laughs> are you really? I really am. That's what's so <laughs> <serious. laughs> That is awesome. What an eye, man. What an eye. Who was it? Mike Berry. Give him a round of applause. Of, yeah. applause. Wait, wait, wait. Carly, so wait. Carly, do you go to the Kinney? Is that where you go? Um, I have like once, but I haven't done a lot of fishing there. No. Okay. Okay. But I have I mean I will. I have once. It's just it's really busy and it's fished a lot, so it's a bit harder. Yeah. I've got yeah. some I've got some private places I can go where they're the trim bell. Go to the trim bell. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I will. Fishing. No, <laughs> Wisconsin fishing. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you never know what you're going to get on this show. I promise you that. Um, <laughs> Belichick has made an appearance. Um, let's do this. Let's go to the Patreon real quick. We asked the same exact question there, and let's see what they had to say. Mr. Larry Cano said, cornerback and trade up if necessary if they start flying off the board early. So, Larry is all about, hey, look, let's go corner. If you got to get aggressive, make sure you get one of the top guys. I like it. Deadfish says uh, this, again, is in our Patreon group, uh, the PTA Posse over on Patreon. Deadfish says, I'd take one of the top five cornerbacks, if any, would be available at 25. Um, Else, I'd take one of the top five offensive tackles, Graham Barton or JPJ. If multiple players are available at 25, I consider trading down. I love that the majority of the people that that watch and listen to the show, they're like, hey, look, we're team trade back. Because I always felt like I was, I mean, literally on a raft out in the middle of the ocean by myself when I'd be screaming trade back. So it's pretty cool that a, a good chunk of people agree with that. Ron Samble in the Patreon group said, if they plan on picking a, picking a cornerback, it should probably be at 25. Tim, we've talked about that this whole offseason, haven't we, man? It's like if you don't take that corner at 25, it's good. you're going you're gonna to have a rough go at it, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, and as we see today, you know, we just brought another corner in, right? So it's making me think that uh, they may not go that route, unless unless it is a scenario like we, like we said, if, you know, one of these top guys falls to us. Right. Maybe it's not even Cooper DeGene. It could be, you know, McKinstry could fall for all we know, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of cornerback talent. 
I'm, I'm guessing one or two of them is going to fall and end up somewhere that uh, we're not expecting. Um, but I just, you know, like you say, Clayton, is there precedence for this? It's like when when is the last time the Packers used their first round pick on a corner? Mm-hmm. You know, right? It's right. been a while, so. Yeah. You had you had Eric Stokes there, and and I think we would all agree it really hasn't worked out, you know. So yeah. it's tough. Um, I'll tell you this though, Tim, you would have been jumping for joy if you'd listened to Daniel Jeremiah's Move the Sticks podcast earlier today. They they done this really cool set where they would take like two top guys at positions and say, all right, who would you rather take? Emilio's grinning. Did you did you watch it, Emilio? Or are you looking? I was at listening to it when I was working today. Yeah. So basically. The two corners they mentioned was Nate Wiggins, right, Mr. Lightning Fast, and Enos Rakestraw. Get through their coat. <laughs> Enos Rakestraw over, didn't they? I was like, it's the, I started laughing as soon as they said, I'm like, wow, man, because everybody just loves Nate Wiggins. Mm-hmm. You got two of the best in the business breaking down the draft board. Who, about, uh, who was it they were comparing? Um, was it Nate Wiggins they compared to uh, DRC? Like, uh, I think it may have been. I think it might have been, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit skinnier, but quick, you know, had a good career sort of thing. But mm-hmm. man, Tim grinning ear to ear, listening to that <laughs> thing, grinning like a possum in a dumpster. <laughs> so you see right here with the 33rd team, they got Nate Wiggins in the 14 spot. They got Enos Rakestraw at the 19 spot. They've got, you know, 68s on Kool Aid and Nate. And then you've got uh, 67s on Quinyon Mitchell and Enos Rakestraw Jr. So the fact that they took Enos Rakestraw Jr. over Nate Williams just shows you how close that can be right there. So uh, what do you think about that, Tim? Would you be okay with Enos Rakestraw Jr. jumping over Nate Williams? That is a possum in a dumpster. (laughs) (laughs) I'd be cool with that. Um, Rakestraw is my favorite, um, you know, quote unquote, smaller um, corner in this draft, you know, under six foot, under 190 kind of guy. Um, you know, Wiggins obviously has a little bit more of that physicality. He's a little bit taller, little, um, you know, but he's kind of lean too. So I don't know, man. I just, something about the tape on Rakestraw, man, makes me just feel really good about him uh, in a Packer uniform. So keeping my fingers crossed that uh, we end up getting him. <laughs> but I won't hold my breath because it probably won't happen. <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. I had a had a pup at the door looking at me like she needed something. So. She was just up here to bother me. Um, second group of Patreon. We have uh, AZ Marky Mark. Love it. Love the names. My preference is an O-line player, uh, someone who can play any of the five positions, possibly center-centric. Then maybe we can move uh, Josh to right guard and improve the whole line. You know, immediately you think of Graham Barton there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, someone who's versatile in that regard. Let's see. We got – Chris in the Patreon group says cornerback as the value really drops off early round two, unless Intel suggests they can get rake straw or TJ Tampa at 41, in which case I would say offensive tackle or guard in round one. Okay. Um, Randy Cleavers goes on to say, I would like to see interior offensive line or DB again, Tim, and you, you got rake straw, man. I think you've, uh, I think you've been dropping flyers out everywhere, man. Is that what's been going on? Yeah, you know, just doing a little little promotion. That's all. You know, I'm, uh, unpaid, totally volunteer work. So don't worry. <laughs> what do you think uh, about these these three messages right here, Jacob, from the uh, Patreon group? Well, can I ask a question quick? I, I listened to about half of the Mike Wall interview, which is great. Obviously, we love when Mike Wall can come on the the podcast. Did by chance? I might have missed it. Did he express how easy or mm-hmm. I guess uneasy it would be for a guy like Myers to switch from the center position to a right guard. If that was something that we could do, like, is that logical? Is that something that he could actually pull off? I mean, if I remember correctly, Josh Myers is kind of a larger center compared to most, right? Isn't he like six, four, six, five, right? Six, six, seven, I thought, right. Six, seven. Uh, no, I think he's, no, six, I think he's like six, 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 four, six, five. Okay. And, you know, in the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, centers were usually somewhere around six foot, six one, six two, right? Yeah, and they're, they're starting to evolve and get bigger. And, um, you know, in the past, you'd say, no, center, that's too short. The arms are going to be too short. They're, they're just not going to be built to play guard. Um, you know, they're, they're just a primary center. But now when you've got these, these centers that are 
much bigger, much taller. It makes a lot of sense. I would think that body type wise, yeah, six five three ten is Josh Myers says United Bates, uh, <laughs> six five and a quarter. Yeah, so you yeah. know, I think when it comes to that size, you've kind of eliminated that problem when it comes to a center switching to a guard. But again, you know, uh, you got to look at the technical standpoint. And and I was kind of surprised when Mike said that about Graham Barton because it's like you always just kind of assume, you know, if a guy's big enough. He could play center. He could play guard. It shows you how little we know, right? He obviously seen something on tape, and he talked about him having a strong base. He just didn't like his hands, right? Was the main yeah. thing. So the other thing we're not talking about is the the FBI, right? You know, the, right. the football IQ, and you know, there's a lot of moving pieces there on the line, and center's pretty important. So right, exactly. Um, on to the next group of Patreon messages here. This next one comes in from Jonathan Coach. I hope I'm saying that right, Koch. Offensive tackle with versatility to guard. If the above isn't available, then cornerback with solid outside man coverage ability, kind of like what Carly was talking about there. Um, if the above, like Andis Rakestraw Jr. <laughs> <laughs> if the above aren't available, then edge with complementary skill set to Gary Van Ness and Smith. Just my two cents. Smiling emoji. I love how detailed it was. Just my two cents. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Clayton, did you see Mike Hebring's chat here about the not a lot of uh, non first round CBs or a lot of non first round CBs playing in league? Love some later round CBs, quarterbacks, really? CBs. Yeah, that's yeah, what he that's, said. Uh, that's to the contrary in this draft uh, to every what everyone else is saying right now, Mike. Um, every draft's different too, right? Um, not that you're doing this, but sometimes things get thrown around. Like, oh, we can. Get, I've heard a lot of people. We can get an offensive lineman later in the draft. It's like that is not how teams look at this, guys. <laughs> right? yeah. We'll go in and go. All right, yeah, we'll just get that later. They've got the board stacked. And they're trying to get as many of those top fifty guys on their board as possible. That's usually how it works. Um, now they're. There's a cluster of safeties later, according to Daniel Jeremiah, uh, safeties and running backs. I haven't heard that you can get just as good a depth at cornerback outside of the third round, personally. So, um, again, it just – when we've done all the mocks, and we don't know how it's going to fall. You know, mock drafts are exactly exactly that. They're mocks. You don't, you don't know exactly how things are going to unfold. Um, but uh, it just seems like if we don't, uh, if we don't attack corner – in the first round, we find ourselves chasing our tail, trying to find the right fit right later. So Jake Savink in the chat says, so many focus on late round hits without realizing the plethora of late round misses. Yes, you hit the nail on the head, Jake. Absolutely, mm-hmm. man. Um, we, we, you know, you hit on top. Well, we got Tom Brady later in the draft. It's like, yeah, name another one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it just doesn't happen that often. So um, it's the exception, not the rule, right? Okay, wait. Carly Ray, are you a falconer? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to make this a. <laughs> didn't mean yeah, to make this a. Keep, I'm, I'm watching the chat. You're a falconer. You help. You you hunt with falcons. Yeah. Correct. Okay. You told me that a long time ago. Yeah. This was not. I didn't know she was the coolest chick I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that when you met me with my three kids at the parish shooting place, huh? I was jumping out of a plane that day. I thought I was the coolest guy. <laughs> ever All right. No, I'm not. Carly's, yes, Carly's you were. A BA. All right. I think Coley's the only person to see uh, Jacob walking around with you could you could tell a, a diaper was underneath his pants. There. He's getting oh, ready I, was pooping. I was pooping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next one. Uh, Rich Beck, um, obviously in the Patreon group, says excited if we can hit a good value plus B position of need with that pick. Cornerback, safety, offensive line would be nice any of those three and that's kind of what we've talked about right Emilio like yeah if you can land any of those three in a starting caliber player it's that's a home run man. Mm-hmm. I mean I I think we're, we've narrowed it down to you know top two would be cornerback O-line safety possibility do you remember listening where was he was DJ saying that he didn't have any safeties in the top 50 of his and he he had Cole Bishop and uh Did you talk about Cole yeah he had Cole, who was it Cole Bishop and Jaden Hicks next to each other Yep. I think he, I think it was. I, they they did mention. No, they didn't mention Newbin. Um, no, they didn't, they didn't say Newbin. So that's yeah. what I was wondering: was he outside of the top fifty? Or oh yeah, no doubt, Newbin's yeah. out, okay. out of their top fifty. Yeah, I'm almost positive on that. Oh, um, but oh. yeah, Cole Bishop is that name that keeps he's popping. popping up. I'm telling you, man, he's he's gaining some traction, and you heard him and Bucky talk about it too. When you get these two 
two safeties like a Hicks and a, and a Cole Bishop. And you go, okay, which one? I I personally, I could be wrong, Amelia. I don't think he was saying those were his top two safeties. I okay. think they were just picking players that were in the same tier, kind of close to each other. Which one would you take? Gotcha. But I could be wrong. Um, but I love how you said the tiebreaker for me would be special teams, and they really liked what they thought Cole Bishop could do mm-hmm. on special teams. Right? And he, he's smart, you know. He 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 can direct out there in the back in the back end. He he can play. He can that too, yeah. follow a t- tight end up the field, up the seam, and he can fill a gap. So I, that was cool to see. Yeah, and uh, the uh, yeah, the, what was the other thing? Six foot two, right? Yep. Six foot two, good frame. So yeah, gonna be uh, gonna be cool to see the safety room. Watch everybody's like, oh well, the safety isn't top heavy. Watch there be two or three gone in the second round or something. Wouldn't that be wild? They've just right. like going on safeties in the second round. Um, all right. So the last set of Patreon answers to that question, that poll question, Maki on mute. Kept it short and sweet. He said, O-line's a big need. There you go. Let's let's patch up that O-line. Do you rant? And Patreon said, I feel the secondary needs to be addressed, whether it's with Dejean, uh, who would project more at safety, or another alpha corner opposite of Jair. I was trying to get a uh, an audio pulled up from that podcast me and Amelia were talking about, and they hands down said Dejean is the, uh, the best slot player in this draft. Right, Amelia? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that he's a dog. He can do it all. That he show he he's shown it all on tape, right? We're not projecting anything. The dude can return punts. He can return kicks. He can cover. He can be a safety. He can do it all with with size and speed. Which is, I think they were also talking about Nate versus. Hey, you know, are we going to take the dude that's one seventy or the dude that's two hundred? Right. And I think they also mentioned with DeGene, I didn't know this. Uh, was he a state champion long jumper? Is that what it was? Yeah, was something yeah. about that. We've definitely met. I think we've we've said it a few times. Broke state records, I think, yeah, as well. He holds Dude. almost every state record and anything that could be held. <laughs> I, I saw a highlight. He, he broke saw the highlight. Jacob, did you see him dunking? Yo, he broke the basketball scoring record. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he also is the the long jump. He's a great basket uh, baseball player. He is an absolute. He's a track uh, and, and field athlete. I mean, the guy is a freak. He's a freak. Dude just drove to the bucket every time, just either a windmill or a two-hand oh, slam over yeah. everybody. He's got alley oops. It was unbelievable. Yep. Tim, Tim said, "You know what he doesn't have? A last name called Rake Straw." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see. Last one. Greg in Green Bay said, "I'm hoping for Cooper DeGene in the first round, even if they have to trade up. Otherwise, improving the <laughs> offensive line to protect Love is most important." So, well, do do you think DeGene could be Jair? If so, then I think Goody would move up for him. That's would a good be, point. Would be man. my take. It's a good point. Um, I don't think we have to make much of a case for DeGene, though, right? Like everything right. Emilio you just said is is a reason to draft a guy, right? Right. So I mean, you could he could be a, you know, a slot if something goes wrong with Keyshawn. You know, we've got a we've got a slot. If we have an issue at safety, we can put him there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he could probably play on the boundary if we need him to. Um, like you said, special teams contribution. I'll tell you this: if the Packers do in fact move up, that might be the guy they're moving up for. I think so. Yeah, I said that on Twitter, and I got roasted, but. <laughs> that's Twitter. I did say, hey, look, you know, this might be the one because there was rumors that they might be interested in trading up to the 16 spot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it kind of makes a lot of sense there. But, you know, then again, they may be big on Terry and Arnold. They may be big on Kool-Aid McKinstry if they think he's going to be gone. Um, you know, all I know is they better not trade up and get a quarterback. Or I got to get a neck, Tad. I do know Dude, that. I do. <laughs> it's, it's that. Could you imagine if, if the Packers trade up in the first round and we're live <laughs> for night one? It, you know the the chat's going to go nuts if the Packers trade up because that's the first step, right? <laughs> if they trade up and took a quarterback, man. And, and the hair on Clayton's back is going to stand up, and I'm telling you, that man is going to be sweating. <laughs> hey, I have three tattoo oh, artists that already talked to about this that I will gladly pay. It's already in the works. Uh, you already have a standing appointment, Clayton. So <laughs> <laughs> I already got it. I already got it scheduled. I love it. Yep. And you got to get a tattoo of Jacob's bicep. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a tattoo of his a tattoo of his race car bed. Yes. Of Emilio's of Emilio's race car bed. I think it should be a tattoo of the silhouette of Jacob's beard. You know what I mean? Right there. On the, <laughs> I think it should be a tattoo of Mel Kuyper. <laughs> okay, who in the hell is Mel Kuyper in a way? I don't know, Mr. Tobin. I have no idea. But uh 
Again, quick shout out to everybody in Patreon that uh, that contributed here. I love the fact that we've got that group over there. Greg in Green Bay, do you rant? Maki on mute. Uh, Jonathan Coach, Rich Beck, uh, A Z Marky Mark, and the Funky Bunch. Chris, drop that comment down for me just a second. D remember, I want to mm -hmm. see it though. Randy Cleavers, and then of course Larry Cano, Dead Fish, and Ron Samble. Appreciate y'all chiming in, giving your opinion. Go ahead and put that back up there now if you want to. That's no, he's just saying that we should make some money off this. We get Clinton getting his tattooed neck and get a pay-per-view going on. It will be a live. It will be a stream yard live. I will somehow will commandeer be, yeah. all the controls. Tattoos yeah. at 65. Oh, I like it. 65%. I love it. 65%. 65%. <laughs> that's what we right on the neck. 65%. Oh. Yeah. So, Jacob, if they don't trade up in the first round to get a quarterback, what are you doing? If they don't, so you're trying to get me now involved in this? <laughs> what is this? I was just sitting here minding my business, dude. You're the one that got all high and mighty saying. I'm not going to, so quit asking. That was the best part, man. I'm telling you, Justin, Justin's text was hands down the best, the best part of the whole bet thing there. If I could find it real quick, it cracked me up. If you guys don't know, Justin is tatted up just like Jacob, right? Yes. My dad was a tattoo artist. He did he did tattoos for about 16 years. Um, he said, all, all Justin says, Goody's a wild card, man. That neck tattoo bed is risky. And then he said, <laughs> let me tell you, it hurts like a beep and makes you look like a hoodlum. I know from experience. <laughs> yep. All right. How about this? If, if the Packers take a wide receiver in the first round, I'll get another neck tattoo. <laughs> That's not a bad. Already You're already <laughs> gonna get one anyway. <laughs> if if the Packers take a wide receiver in the first round, you have to get a very small neck tattoo of Emilio in his race car bed. Oh, dude, I'll just get a race car bed on my neck. That'll be that cool. would be kind of fun. <laughs> All right, I'm kind of into it now. All right, All right here you go. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. We're at the 56 minute mark. We did it. I we did it. Yes. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. A real question. Oh, <laughs> whatever. Not on this. <laughs> show. Oh. So here's I, uh, <laughs> I was so I was listening to a podcast comparing the top wide receivers in this draft, and there was and I kind of came up with this question of, do you guys think is it better to have a guy that can just always get open that the majority of his catches are past twenty yards, um, and that you know is going to come down with the ball, but Kaz is zero after the catch ability whatsoever. Like it's just, it's going down there or somebody who, if you get the ball to him, you know, he's going to make some people miss and has upwards of six, seven yards after the catch average. What is more valuable in your minds? It's tough, man, because you know, there's, there's different positions or different um, points in the game where you need those specific things, right? If you if you had to make me choose, you're saying, would you rather have rack a rack guy, you know, run after the catch, or would you rather have a possession catch guy, right? Is essentially what the question is. We'll go around the horn with it. I think mine's rack. I think it is because if your starting quarterback goes down and your your backup quarterback can't can't put that ball in the right spot and give your receiver a chance to make the play you're going to kind of shift to exactly what Bill Walsh had to do in Cincinnati when he invented the West Coast offense. You go dink and dunk and you go with these little, you know, five to ten yard routes. you got a guy with good rack ability. Think of a Jaden Reed. Think of a Randall Cobb in his heyday. Think of Antonio Brown before he lost his damn mind. Um, that's another guy that, you know, you could get the ball just five yards down the field and he's going to – he could take it to the house any second. So my answer would be rack. Let's go around the horn. What do you think, Tim? Would you rather have rack? Or kind of a, a jump ball possession type guy. No, I'm rack with you right. all the way. This is a Matt Lafleur offense. You know, um, you make a great point. You know, if you if you got a backup in there, it's good to have those guys. Plus, we got field stretchers already with with Watson, and we've got uh, you know the Lucas monster and uh, Tuck Norris there in the tight end room <laughs> that can uh, make things happen uh, when it comes to that. So, uh, no, I'd rather have a a shifty, you know, quick on his feet good in space can create space and uh you know definitely get the yards after the catch so yeah for sure yeah what about you uh jake what, what would yours be man man i'm getting roasted in the chat oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good bet though that one sure. that is a good Save the beard if jake if jacob loses the bet the beard's gotta go bro i don't like that i haven't shaved <laughs> my beard in like 
eight years. Dude, Clayton's gonna get a neck tattoo, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, up, you gotta up the game here, Jake. Let's go. All right, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, I would, I would, I would. <laughs> we'll talk see. about. We'll talk about it. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's a great. That's actually is a really good question because it's like like you talked about. Do you want a guy that's just wherever the ball's thrown, he's gonna catch it. He's gonna come down with it, point of contact kind of thing. Or do you like like Clayton said? Do you want a guy that you can dump it off an underneath route and he can run for freaking 20, 30, 40, 50 yards plus? Um, I think you need one of each, and I'm going to take a cop out right there. You need you need one of each. You you have three wide receivers usually in a set for a reason, right? At least two. So, um, that's, but who do that's you take in the first round if you need both? Who do you take in the first round of the draft? Oh boy. It's, now you get, you get yak. an answer out of you, dude. What are you putting value now, on? Now the days I'd take the yak. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying yak. I know you said rack. I say yards after kick. Right, it's the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Go ahead, uh, mm-hmm. Amelia. I mean, yeah, I would say look how would nervous say- he is. He looked like immigration just walked in. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's going. He can block. Somebody snorted. Who snorted? Who was that? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, Jacob. We lost him. <laughs> Um, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, if if I could get a elite speed possession receiver, I'd take him. But I would, I guess, take Rack. Um, but like, you, if you found a dude that can take the top off, you you drop it to him two or three times a game. You can get seven points out of it, seven fourteen out of that. We're cruising, but yeah. yeah. And again, I think it's just we kind of look at jump balls like it's just so easy to do. But you know, typically those receivers. They've got a really good quarterback just putting the ball in a tight window on back shoulder throws, all that good stuff. What do you what is your problem, Jacob? I'm just thinking of Moe's Schrute grabbing Emilio and putting him in the back of a van. Of people. <laughs> I call Moe's at 555. And then, and then I take <laughs> this is probably my favorite right here. M. Smitty said, Jacob, only if it's Clayton eating honey as Winnie the Pooh. So you're gonna get a cat. You get, that on, you get this right here on your neck, right there, man. You know what I mean? It's perfect. I've been this Photoshop this side of the Mississippi, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, man. So, man, I'm crying. All right. Y'all were really inappropriate this evening. I just want you to know that. All right. Everybody, everybody's yeah, entitled. Really you, Jacob, could we do like a Fu Manchu or like mutton? Like, what could we do if? Those friendly mutton chops. Yeah, could we like just get rid of the? Rid of beard, He's not gonna shave the beard. Uh, maybe well, with, a, a, with like a a a since he was six years old. If we have to shave it, we're gonna do it in segments where we get every single style, and we yeah. Take- oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. All right, it. Tim, you got anything else, man? This thing's uh, off the rails, bro. No, um, I'll I'll supply. Uh, I got a <laughs> set of clippers for Jacob, just in case. <laughs> I can't. Oh man, Clayton, I can't unsee that man. Oh. Hey, here's what it is. I got a Twitter poll for sure. What What is more difficult to look at, Clayton with the Jacob beard or Larry McCarran's pinky? <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> That's the answer. Right. Oh, oh my god, Jacob, you got anything else? Nothing. Nothing else. All right. Emilio, you good, man. Uh yeah. Um I apologize for my comment, man. No, no, hey, no, that was you had me laughing. I I guess uh Mr. Green that we signed ran a four five three forty and he benched twelve reps. They he projected him as a seventh round pick, but he didn't get picked up. So I'm was that last I mean, year? Yeah, it was last year's draft. Gotcha. So that that obviously tells you that that he was on their radar to try to sign as an undrafted free agent. It sounds like the Giants might have beat him to it. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'll see. Hey, He's from Michigan, so yeah. So he played for a big program, right? right. <laughs> I bet if you go back and look at his recruitment history too, out of high school, probably is a pretty high recruit. I would imagine going to Michigan like that. So mm-hmm. all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm all about it. Cody says. We need a King of the Hill photo with, with y'all's heads photoshopped in. That would be beautiful, actually. That'd be perfect, good, wouldn't it? We need to make that happen. Who would be Boonhauer? Who would be Boonhauer? I, I think it'd be Tim. No, Tim, it'd, Tim be Emilio. it'd be Emilio. Emilio? I'm freaking Dale. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Carly, you got anything else? You good? Appreciate that question. That was good. You're muted. Sorry. You're muted. muted. Maybe oh. your falcon hit the mute button. <laughs> no, no, no. My daughter came down, and uh, so I had to address her her concern. But no, I it, it's good. This is this is fun. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Well, I guess we'll be back tomorrow night if we don't get canceled for the comment I made to Emilio. We'll see. What I think we'll be all right as long as I, you know, as long as I still show up and it didn't actually. Come. <laughs> Unless Moe's gets you. <laughs> I see a van roll past really slow and then put it in reverse. I I know it'll go. There's somebody right now going. That's inappropriate. Y'all shouldn't joke about it. Like, like uh, what's her name on the office? What was her name? The the blonde Angela. Angela. Oh. I shouldn't joke about that. Remember that one. <laughs> So there's somebody right now going, this is inappropriate that y'all made that comment. Well, go watch something else, okay? We're not sensitive over here. All right? We're not a part of the old camp. Okay? That's just the way we're maybe, maybe that's why I get along with you guys so well, is you don't know what the heck you're talking about. That's probably <laughs> it. <laughs> Could be it. Could be it. All right, we're out of here. We appreciate everybody hanging out with us. We will see you tomorrow night for PTA Live. Amelia, y'all better pull it together, man. <laughs> you can't even get Those a clean house on the pod. I need to get a what? <laughs> huh? What did you say? I said we can't even get a clean outro here without oh. you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Prince in the chat says all that was left in the race car bed was a beat stain. No Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Everybody go oh. sign up for Peacock. All right. You listen. If you sign up for Peacock, you can watch the Super Fan Office episodes, and you get to watch the Packers play in Brazil. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know what else you need. So there's nothing else going on in the world out there. All right, everybody, have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow for PTA Live. Tomorrow is Thursday. Yes, we'll be back tomorrow. If you can get these knuckleheads together here, it's like herding cats. They might do a Good Morning Lambo. I don't know, but I keep throwing it out there. No takers. Jacob always gets that same. Look I can on join. I can join, but I can't run it. Because I have, you know, diapers to change and stuff. I can't uh, tomorrow. I can probably do it Friday. Heard that before. Oh, boy. <laughs> got a Club <laughs> Penguin meetup. Jacob's got a Club Penguin meetup he's got to get to check his injuries <laughs> and stuff. What kind of shirt are you wearing, Emilio? Fallout, baby. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> wash your hands, wash your butt, man. That's it. That's, that's all. It's releasing on Prime next week, I'm pretty sure. You excited about it? I'm gonna, I'll give it a spin. All right. All right. You better get rested up for the draft, man. You hear me? Oh. Night two is going to be awesome. Night two is going to be a blast. And that Bella Vita brought in, authentic Italian. I'm telling you, boy, so good. So Bubble good. cannolis. Hey, oh. right here. It's going to be great. It's going to be over. All right. Everybody have a wonderful evening. For those of you listening on pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And go back, go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the... It's the lead play in our, in our offense. Yes, a YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. Get an isolation with the, with the linebacker. He's on the tackle. He takes the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. Look at this play where we're trying to get a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley.